guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what I'm going to cover is the file manager again and there is another part that I didn't cover last episode because it was going to be too complicated to actually explain and I wasn't familiar with it at the time. So I decided to do it in a second part and that's what we're going to be covering today and that's why I have a whole bunch of different ore blocks in my inventory. So if we end up opening up this document here. I'm just going to re reload it and it should have all these default values that I've basically set up. Now I've already placed a block in the world so this file was generated. Um, as you can see there are iron blocks, gold blocks, lapis blocks, and diamond blocks. The same corresponding blocks that we have in our inventory. You also might notice that there is the main JSON file for the main object and then we have our Kind of like a sub object type thing actually that's exactly what it is it's a sub object and inside that sub object we have four values of the different properties for those um, things that we're basically keeping for the values now that's important because every time we break up one of these blocks or place it that score basically updates so if we were to come across this uh thing here and decide to break that block then open this up it's going to actually say do you want to reload it and we want to go yes it's actually going to be negative one because uh, we were at zero zero now it's negative one if we place it back then open up the file again reload it as you can see it's at 0 0.00 again now that's actually really useful to keeping track of certain blocks people break and other things like that uh, we can actually place any of these blocks down. So we can do a couple gold ones, maybe some diamond, uh, and some lapis. And then we'll open up that file again, reload it. And as we can see, we have 10 emerald or lapis blocks that we placed, seven gold ones, eight iron ones, and four diamond ones, which is all correct. We have four diamond. A iron whatever amount that is and then the lapis blocks there so again if we want to remove them we can we can actually fix that up so it's only a few of them so we should have three lapis two iron two gold and four or two iron two diamond and two gold, or four gold so let's open that again and we have two iron that's correct four gold correct uh, three lapis correct and two diamonds so that's basically how that is all set up now what we're basically going to be covering today is how to make these object uh, files and have the values inside of them and I'll also show the workspace that I basically created this so you guys can use this in your own projects as well so basically the breaking and placing method all right so let's go into amp creator and then we can cover the actual script all right, so in order to actually make this particular JSON file work properly, there are two procedures. Both are global procedures that I have set up for this particular tutorial, and it allows us to use test for things in, outside of our own mod, like uh, vanilla blocks and stuff like that as well. So both of those procedures are right at the bottom here, and this one is block. a block is placed, and then the other one is a block. A block is broken so these are the two procedures that we're going to be actually working with I'm going to start with the uh, placed one because it's exact same pretty much the exact same thing as the one broken it just with some minor changes all right so the first thing that you might have noticed is we're going to be testing for the entity that is breaking the block now this is important because some entities in the Minecraft world can actually break blocks as well and we don't want to generate a random file without a certain player name. Um, now, in that case, what we want to do is just specify if the player, if it is the player or it is a server player. So that's what we're doing with this main if statement. We're just basically testing if it is either a player or it's a server player. If it's a server player, then or a player, then what we want to do is we want to basically get the file location of where we're storing the blocks. Now the blocks are located in configs, namespace, and then blocks were the main folder. 
And then what we're doing is we're basically using that neat nickname thing that I did last in the last part. Um, basically grabbing that variable and then we're setting that JSON file again so we can keep track of all the different types of blocks that player breaks. So that's basically setting the file that we file location that we're basically want to that's set to a variable. And then what we want to do is test if the file does not exist. And then if it doesn't exist, what we want to do is we want to set the default values of, or we want to create the file first for the JSON file. And then we want to set the files or the properties in that particular thing. Now, you might notice before we get ahead, there are two objects. There is a main object and then there is a sub object. Now, because we only have one sub object that we're working with, that would be our or blocks sub object. We don't really need anything else, but if we wanted to add another sub object down below it, then what we would want to do is create another sub object in this particular variable list. Now it's important because we actually need to read it and um, it basically creates it in a certain way. So if you want different ones, then you're going to have to expand your um, your local variables list for, to support those objects. The other thing that you notice, there is another block down here where it says uh, add JSON object. Now this is the one that we're basically adding the object to. As you can see, it's the same name as the one in the document right here. So this is our main thing that we're actually setting in the main object file. Now this would be the main object file. This is your sub object. So in our case, what we're doing is we're setting these properties to our sub object, and then we're telling it, oh, hey, guess what? I want to grab our sub object. So all these values up here are in that sub object. And then we want to add it to our main object. And then this is the value of the name that I want to give it. And then after, we're basically just uh, writing to that particular file. So it's going, okay, grab the main and write to the file. So that's what we're doing for that part. Now, in order to update the properties to make sure that no other values actually get changed outside of the proper ones that we want to, we have to do that whole process kind of again with a few minor steps. Now, the first thing that we actually need to do for actually writing or rewriting to the file is we need to actually, does file exist? Now, we want to know if it exists. If it does, we do not want to actually create a new file again. We just want to write to it. So this is where this part comes in. The next thing that we're doing is we're testing for the blocks that we want to actually determine on what ones we're placing. And then we're gonna set the proper values to those ones that we're gonna increase or decrease. So in our case, what we're doing, we're going provided block state. Now this basically says, hey, get the block that is just placed or broken depending on what procedure that we're running. And then it's going and comparing it to the block that is, if it is a certain block. So in our case, is the block placed equal to an iron block? If that is true, then what we want to do is we want to read the local file. So again, our local file is this one right here. And then what we want to do is we want to make sure that the local area is in main object. So the reason for that is we want to target our main object for reading and then we can test for sub objects inside of that thing. So then what we need to do is actually set a local value both for a sub object. This is important because we actually need to know where the sub object is in order to actually write to it. Now, if it isn't defined already up here, then we need to actually define it later on in our script. So if it's not being created here, then it's not going to be able to be defined, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to set the local variable. Now you can grab a local variable and a, grab an object one. It's the dark purple one. And you want to set the sub object for that particular um, variable. The other thing that you want to do is you want to grab a block in the file manager. It's a purple block. And then you want to use that name for the sub object. So in our case, it is the or block underscore blocks. And then we're going to say, okay, it is in the main object. So we want to basically test for the sub object in our main object. So in that case, it is in our main object. This is our main object. 
This is our sub object, so it is in our main object. So that's basically what we want to do there. And then after what we're doing is we're going to basically go, okay, hey, this is the iron block. We want to update this value by one. So because we're using testing for the values, it needs to be in the read JSON file. And we're basically going, okay, get the JSON, JSON number property, iron block, and increase that number by one, and then apply it to iron block. So this is basically where that part comes in. These two values here need to be sub objects because it's in a sub object group. So we need to make sure that these are consistently updated properly. The other thing that you might notice is there are the other blocks and I've just added the same uh, block as this one right here for getting the JSON property and I'm just assigning it to the same thing. So it's basically keeping that same value for those other blocks. So in our case, we're keeping the value for the gold block, the lapis block and the diamond block when we're breaking a or placing a iron block. And then when we're placing it, we're basically increasing the iron block value by one. Now we're doing that for all of them. And there is one last thing that we're doing, same thing up here, where we're basically going, okay, now grab all these values, put it into the main object under the or blocks cat or object file. So basically, or sub object. So basically we have to do that all over again. So we have to do that right here. We're going, okay, take the sub object, all these values, put it into the main object under the or blocks name. So that's what we've done. And then we're just writing to the file. So that's basically that. Now, if we were to go into our other property or other one where we're breaking the block, it's the same exact thing. The only difference is we're basically subtracting that value. So that's all there is to sub objects and how to make them. They're really handy when you want to organize some of your script. You can actually still use in conjunction the main objects and put values in the main object if you want, which is really handy when you want to make a file version for that particular document so you can update it later. I might do a tutorial on that in the future so um, it can be easy, easily defined, but I'm still experimenting with it so I'm not going to do that just yet. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.